Hello, everybody, and welcome to the Hip Senior Podcast uh, Book Edition. In this series, uh, we chat with authors who have written books about and for seniors. Uh, these writers have a wealth of knowledge and experience to share with us from practical advice on health and wellness to heartwarming stories of aging gracefully. We'll delve into their books and explore why they're important to read and what inspired the authors to write them. And today we're really excited to have Krista Powers, who wrote the book uh, Midlife Calm, an alternative to midlife crisis. She's also a life and leadership coach, which is re um, just really intriguing. Krista, welcome to the podcast. Thank you so much for having me, Marianne. Oh, I'm just, it, it's my pleasure, really. I'm so excited to have you here. So Krista, you wrote Midlife Calm. Tell, tell me about this book. Tell me a little bit about you, about what this book is. Sure. So this book is about creating alignment within ourselves. It's about choosing to acknowledge and hear our inner wisdom, as well as all the outside expectations and noise and labels that we accumulate throughout life. And so it, it came from just my own experience of along the way, feeling you know, like I wasn't worthy of things or playing small and kind of keeping myself safe and contained. And I got to this point where I felt pinched from so many years of living that way. And I made this really radical choice to quit my job. And it was this huge leap. It was an awesome job. That's actually the first line of the book. I quit my job and I was a single adult. I didn't have healthcare. I didn't write all the things that would make me afraid to do it. I took the leap and by cracking myself open, I realized, wow, this is something that I'm doing to come into myself, to make some choices that align with who I am, what I'm up to, and to create my path going forward. And that's when I identified, this is what midlife calm is. It's creating my path for me. And it's not a crisis whatsoever. And, and it occurred to me, if this is happening within me, if it's alive within me, it must be alive within others. So let me write this book and share it with others to, to see if they can relate. And so far it's had a pretty nice reception in the world. That is so awesome. Cause we all, we always hear midlife crisis. People are like, I'm having a midlife crisis. It's like, why does it have to be a crisis? You know, it can be a change. It can be mm -hmm. a calm experience. Like you're saying it, it, there's so many things it can be. It doesn't have to be crisis. Not everything has to be in crisis mode. I mean, so you went through all these other things, what kind of, um, when you said you're getting really good reception, give me some examples of, of that reception from people that you're getting it from. Well, what I find so delightful is I've had a woman who is 80 years old reach out and say, I read your book and it applied to me. And, and she doesn't consider herself in midlife. And yet she's right. in this phase of transition. And I've also had a 27 year old reach out and say, wow, this really impacted me. It gave me a lot to think about. It gave me a lot to consider. And so as the author of the book, I'm going to say, let's scrap the title midlife. It was a great hook to start with by all means. And yet this is really a message about creating our calm. And so it can be for a 16 year old to 106 year old who is choosing to, again, just I always talk about turning down the dial of the external expectations and turn up the dial of the inner wisdom and having space for both of it, those where we get to create our path and we pay attention to our language, the stories we're telling ourselves and how we're standing in intention. And that is all wrapped within the book and some, some stories to really highlight and bring this to life. And then some practices that people can put into action. I'm, I'm a core believer in let's, let's put this to work for ourselves. So you can read a book and that's great. And then set it down yet. What's the, so what now what of it? And that's where my book offers some questions for people to dig in and consider how they're showing up in life and make a couple little tweaks so that they go down the path that, that serves them best. What is the one thing that if somebody reads your book, and they set it down and they think we, and I know you just covered some of this, but, but there's so many things to unwrap with all of this, but if there, if there was one thought that you wanted them to think when they finished mm -hmm. reading your book, what is that one thought? Ooh, that's a big question. Ooh, <laughs> thank you. I love big questions. <laughs> okay. So 
I also don't play within in the rules, right? So I'm going to say the two thoughts that I would love for a person to walk away with. Um, the first is, wow, I'm curious. And to, to have this, this feeling of curiosity where they want to keep diving in. So it's not like I implanted a nugget of knowledge in their brain through my book. It's really the feeling and, and the vibe of curiosity which then plays into their language and how they're showing up in the world. The second thought that I would love a person to walk away with is I am powerful and I have choice. And when we stand in that as individuals, it becomes breaking the mold of expectations because I grew up and I thought I was going to be married and have 2.5 kids and you know have a dog and I don't. And it's okay. And so it's okay for me to make powerful choices along the route of my life journey. And sometimes I've forgotten that in the past. And I want the 20 year old and the 99 year old to remember I am powerful and I have choice. That is amazing. Okay. All right. So people are watching this on the Hip Senior Books and they can clearly see your book, but show us the book. And do you have a clip, uh, you know, a short little reading of something that you want to share with us? Yes. So here's the book. It seems my, my shirt is very matchy today. I was just thinking um, that. <laughs> and the wall behind you as well. It's yes. Kind of lots of green. It's my <laughs> color. <laughs> so I'm going to read a passage. It's a couple paragraphs. It'll take about two minutes. So I invite the listener to just sit back and, and absorb this. In the early moments of my midlife calm, I felt tight. I was rigid and awkward as I ventured into a new approach. It calls to mind a story my maternal grandfather once shared. There was a little boy who came into the general store. A jar of candy sat on the counter next to the register for people to enjoy. Seeing the candy, the little boy's eyes grew as big as silver dollars. His hand dove straight into the jar. He wrapped his fingers around as many pieces as his little fist could hold. When he went to pull his handful of loot out, he realized his fist was too big to pass through the mouth of the jar. He had everything he wanted in that fistful of candy. However, he could not have it. So close, yet so far. There are two morals to this story. The first is that there are many solutions available to most situations. The little boy could have used his thumb and pointer finger to pick up several pieces of candy from the jar one by one. He could have tipped the jar over and dumped several pieces out. He could have used the scoop sitting on the counter. He did not see all the possibilities available, so he did not get what he wanted. The second moral of the story is that we do not have to hold on to things so tightly to have them in our lives. To enter my midlife calm, I had to acknowledge how tightly I was holding on to the notion of making a certain amount of money and holding a specific title. I had to pay attention and make space to listen to my desires. As it turns out, I had every one of those desires immediately available if I only relaxed my grip and trusted myself. I have freedom, creativity, wealth, and even my desired title. I am the CEO of my life and now my business. The beauty of calm is that it is always there. It is always available. All that was required to arrive at my midlife calm was getting out of my own way. That res resonates so much with me. And I really hope that everybody that's watching this video just, just really sat and absorbed that because I don't even know what to say. Hmm. That's, it's beautiful. Thank you for sharing. Thank you. Thank you for allowing me to do that. Well, okay. So now I know what I'm doing the rest of the afternoon. <laughs> um, what are your next steps? What, what are you writing another book? What, what are your next projects? What are you working on now? Yeah, two things. One that continues this thread, um, just that message of create your calm. My vision is that this becomes a movement and that it's not just my stories that are shared. So um, if people choose to visit createyourcalm.world, 
they can share on my platform their own stories and experiences of calm in their life. So that's that's a place where I would love to grow. And I am, I've started to have some downloads about my next book and it's going to be around grief. I've long thought about the topic of grief and death and dying and how our culture um, touches this. And I believe that we have a lot of growth to do. And so I'm, I'm working on um, this concept of grief, whether it's literal death or figurative letting go of things. Oh, what an amazing subject. We often think of grief as death, right? But we often don't think of when you lose a relationship or a friendship yes. or stuff like that, that, that's all grief um, or a catastrophe, like your house burning down or something like that. Exactly right. Yeah. Well, hurry up and write, will you, woman? Ooh, <laughs> that's what I'll do this afternoon then. <laughs> All right. I appreciate that. Yes. On it. All right. Well, everybody, thank you so much for joining us today. Krista, thank you so much for, for sharing some of your time, your wisdom about your book um, and wisdom about just, you know, moving on in, in midlife and, and early life. You know, like she said, it's, it's not necessarily we're not saying you have to be 55 years old and to read this book. You could be 25 years old. You could be 99. Um, so I think just everybody really should uh, be able to read this book and pull out from themselves what it is that means something to them in life from this book. And I hope that everybody will hop over to Amazon, purchase it for Kristen and not for, but from, and, um, get a lot of out of it. And then, you know, feel free to shoot us a note back and, and let Krista know, you know, what your thoughts are about the book as well. Give her a review on Amazon as well. So I would love Kristen, that. thank you again so much. I really appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Take care. Everybody, take care. Bye-bye.